from the very beginning I had a, a my real dad told me he loved me but left um, and he might have I don't know but then a stepdad came in and said that he loved me and my mom but would also tell me not to tell it started with the fondling it started with a grope and then it went straight into sexual intercourse when my mother and I came along new into the town he was looked at as the knight in shining armor that he took in this woman and her young child when his children were already grown and he had the reputation of a very good upstanding citizen she would always say um, if it wasn't for him we wouldn't have this house if it wasn't for him we wouldn't have the money if it wasn't for him we wouldn't have all these good things that he's done for us and I had made it in my head as seven, eight, nine years old that I somehow seduced this man. And I didn't realize that until I was well in my 20s that that's, I put the two and two together of that's the feeling that I felt is that I must have seduced him by walking in front of him with a t-shirt on and not fully clothed at eight years old. When I was in high school, he got sick and he got diagnosed with cancer and I tried to help my mom take care of him in that, in that compassionate way that everybody else was so compassionate of him being sick. So when he died, um, my world got turned upside down. I seen my mother go into a grief that I did not want to see her go into, but at the same time I seen it as being my fault. I had prayed for years that he would die, way before he was ever sick. I had prayed that something would happen to him, and now suddenly something had happened to him, and it was my fault that it was causing all this pain and this grief. And I must be a bad person to cause that. When I went back to college, I really felt like I was having a nervous breakdown on what, what I could have possibly done differently. And I got up one night in the middle of the night and actually I found myself in the bathroom stall, half naked, shaking back and forth and rocking and not knowing how I got there. And... This was before I started drinking, so I wasn't intoxicated, but I was losing it. I really felt like I was losing it. And the only solution I had was to get to the cemetery, to get to him. And so I got in the car and made a six hour drive in the middle of the night across Tennessee and went to an old country cemetery in the boondocks and laid out on the on the ground and literally had to throw it all out there and and I sit there that night and said I don't know why you did what you did but I will not let your stupidity and your mistakes make me crazy and ruin my life for the rest of my life so I'm done this is yours, this was your mistake, this was your whatever it was in you that felt like you, you had to do this to me. I can't let your stupidity ruin the rest of my life and I will not go this route. Mentally, I thought that I had taken care of it. But when I came back, that's when I started drinking. Tried to find that word love everywhere that it was available. Um, man after man after man at the end of a bottle when the drinking wasn't enough then we went to cocaine when cocaine wasn't enough we went to um, later we went to meth whatever was available whatever made the party the party was what I what I did for the next several years um, 
then I met my husband and <laughs> we were compatible partiers. My son was um, two years old. He just turned two when we moved to Georgia. I was smoking some pot one day and doing some pills and I remember waking up, what I call waking up, on the side of the on the side of the bathtub we were potty training him and I remember all of a sudden being aware of him sitting on the toilet looking at me going mama mama and when I was aware of it it scared me to death I had no idea how long he had been calling my name I had no idea taking him in there and the look in his eyes looking at me I didn't want that and I remember walking out of the room and I looked at my husband and I said take care of him I can't be around him like this and I went to the basement and I stayed in the basement the rest of the day until until that high wore off and then I came back to him and I remember at that time there was a lot of praying to God going, please, you got to do something here. God gave me a dream one night and, and in the dream I was traveling up a mountain and snakes continued to fall on me in this open top car. And at the top of the mountain there was a, a figure and a light and I kept thinking if I could just get to that if I could just get to them, I can drop these snakes and it'll be over with. And that's exactly what I did in the dream. I, they were crawling all over me and when I got to, to that light, I opened up in one quick movement and I opened my hands and dropped it out. And on Christmas Eve night, I went to bed. I had been gone for about two weeks and on Christmas Eve night, God woke me up in the middle of the night, and I heard His voice for the first time very audible. And I had heard people say that, but I had never heard it. But He woke me up and said, go home and clean up your house. And now I know, looking back, that that was that moment that I opened the door and dropped everything at that light in that dream because in one quick motion what I had made to be so big in my life that thinking that I couldn't do it without my husband doing it first or without somebody else making us do it I suddenly was able to do and I went back to my house and I asked my husband are you willing to do anything that it takes and he said absolutely so I said we're stopping we're done and what was cool was that God had dealt with him in the exact same way when I was gone had dealt with him in the exact same ideas and the exact same things that he had dealt with me on and I remember being at a church service one night and our pastor preaching about the real love of a father And at the altar call, he said, if you've never felt the true love of a father, he's here to let you feel it. And I stepped out that night and I thought, God, if your touch would really make a difference, then I need to know what real love really means. And I stepped out and I literally felt God's arms around me. And I felt a fatherly love that I knew at that moment that I was supposed to feel. And from that time on, God changed everything. And over the past seven or eight years, I have seen God provide for me in ways that I would have never possibly dreamed 
I've seen him take me places that I would have never dreamed of going. And I and I've told people people that hear my story or that have known me before to know that I did meth, that I did drugs, that I drank as much as I drank. I always hear people look at me and say, I would have never imagined that about you. I would never have seen that. You don't look like that person. And my only response to that is possibly that God said that he would make you a new creation. And he did just that. He made me a totally new creation. I'm not that person anymore. But it was nothing of what I did because I tried for years. And I couldn't pretend my way out of that until I truly let God take over. And he made me completely new. How great the love of Jesus Christ. Upon the cross of Calvary, the blood was shed that pardons me. No longer be